And also when I go to sit in these classes, I can actually learn from these teachers. Recently, when I first made it, I got caught up and Aristotle was giving a lecture and I sat in and listened. So it's really cool. You can create these things. You can pull in certain energies and then you can let them run on their own. What's up guys welcome back to live like low i'm low and today we're going to be talking about something super duper awesome okay so before we get started please if you find this content completely irresistible and you just can't stop going through the series of creating your sacred space in the astral then hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you get notified the next time that I post a video and we can get in this community together. Because what? Because we are a fucking tribe, babe. Yes, yes. Okay, honey, let's go. All right, so today we're talking about... Ah, I'm so excited. Today we're talking about how to set up an altar in your sacred space in the astral. So in the last two videos, this is going to be part three. In the last two videos, we talked about one, how to create a sacred space. Two, we talked about how to create doors in your sacred space. Specifically, and you know it, <laughs> your Akashic Records door. So now we're at oh, part three, baby. We're going to create altars for our deities or whoever we wish to work with. Today, I'm going to specifically be focusing on deities, but you can take this technique and use it for your ancestors or any other spirits that you work with that require an altar. Now, let us begin. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay. So let's lock it in right now. We're going to get started. I'm going to bring you through each step. And then at the end, I'm going to basically run a summary so you can understand everything that we're doing. And then later, I'm going to post another video that will walk you through this. If you guys are having a hard time doing it on your own, just leave a comment down below if that's something you guys want to see, like a really good walkthrough with the meditation and everything so you can do it with me. It's going to be totally awesome. I'm super excited about that. So guys, let's get started. All right, honey. So number one, let's get started with the flavor. Okay. So the first thing that you need is the deity that you want to work with. So currently I'm going to use both Thoth as an example, because he has an astral altar that I recently created for him to show me the exact steps for you guys to take in this video. Then I'm also going to give you examples from the altar that Yemaya and I created through my imagination, although she kind of created it herself and invited me to visualize it so that it was there already. So I'm going to tell you what space, what the spaces look like and how you can create yours. I'm gonna walk you step by step through this. So the very first thing you need is your deity. Who are they? What are they known for? What do they do, okay? What are their favorite offerings? What are the animals? What are the colors? And you can take your time and write these down. Not everybody knows exactly all the little minute details of their deity, but it is important for this creation so that you can put the things that they like. For example, Thoth has an Ebus. So I'm gonna show you guys what that is. Hold on real quick. All right, you guys, so I have the tools. All right, so Thoth has an Ebus. This is what it looks like. This bird is actually extinct, but it was very, it was a very sought after bird in Egypt. It was a very respected bird because obviously Thoth's head is an Ebus bird. Okay, so in Thoth's altar, I have these Ebus running around and I also have like a habitat for them. So it's good to know little canny things just to make it more at home for your deity. Okay. Now 
The second thing that I recommend, this is for correspondences, guys. If you don't already have one of these and you're working with different deities, this book is really awesome. And it just, it's an encyclopedia of spirits. Right now, I have marked Isis because I've been working with her lately. But I'll show you, like, it shows everything about them. You have your fables, you have favorite people, manifestations, economy, et cetera, et cetera. But you can also look this up online. I do suggest that if you guys are looking it up online, find multiple sources. Multiple, 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 multiple. Most of all sources, okay? So make sure you're finding multiple sources so that you can cross-reference. Some things won't be mentioned in one place, but will be mentioned in the other about a deity. For example... In this book, it doesn't say that Thoth likes bread, but through a practitioner review of how he works with Thoth, Thoth deeply enjoys bread, and through the resources that he used, that was one of his favorite things to make. So, more recently, I have been making Thoth bread, and before that, I was doing a lot of studying as my, as my offering to Thoth. So, know these things what do they like to be offered and put things that you can spend time there in the astral doing or things that you that will be readily made for example if your deity is say for example oshun and she likes honey and her her totem insect is a bee then you would maybe put a lot of trees in the area that maybe are habitated by bees and these bees have a lot of honey not only that but you would want to create bees that would transport this honey to Oshun in a particular way so that means that not only are the bees themselves being a part of this but they are also giving the offering to Oshun through your personal creation okay there are other ways that you can do this but this is just an example right for example, with Thoth, when I created his altar, I created, Thoth was originated in a place called Hippothis. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Heliopathus. And I can't remember the comedic word for it. Sorry, guys. I, it was around the tip of my tongue, but it's gone. So basically, in this place, he was created. So he really likes the idea of how it came about. And in the later, in later history, Heliopolis became the center for the Alexandrian library. So it's a lot of Greek, Greek and Egyptian architecture. So I recreated that in his altar. I also created a library of study and I imagine different scholars throughout time being there and taking classes with each other, constant lectures going on, constant experiments, agriculture, all these different types of things that Thoth created and making them into a giant school where anybody can just come and sit in and learn information, right? So this is the way that I have created those altar. And also when I go to sit in these classes, I can actually learn from these teachers. Recently, I was sitting and when I first made it, I got caught up and Aristotle was giving a lecture and I sat in and listened. So it's really cool. You can create these things. You can pull in certain energies and then you can let them run on their own. What's really cool about this is you're also creating a space where certain, what do you want to call them? Where, oh, where certain ascended masters can also exist underneath this deity. Certain ascended masters underneath the deity may also exude that deity's features and, and attributes, which is awesome because now you have an intellectual and also a spiritual, a masculine and a feminine way to connect into that energy. You have the spiritual energy, but now you have the intellectual energy or vice versa. So. That's something that's really awesome, okay? So make sure that you make a list of everything that the spirit has. I'm sorry, this video is probably gonna be long as hell, y'all. I've been trying. Now, two, you wanna make sure that you cross-check. Uh, this is gonna be the quickest note. Cross-check everything that you have written down as to be true, both in your research and with your deity, because certain deities will accept certain offer offerings from certain people, whereas certain deities won't accept from others. So be sure to connect with your deity, 
and be sure to use your own experiences. What do they like to receive from you? What do they like you to do? And then compare and contrast that with other things. So that way, the stuff that you do is already a main thing. Then you would, on top of that, add things that you maybe didn't know or you maybe can't do. For example, in my house, we're alcohol free, right? But because my my partner doesn't drink alcohol. I don't bring a lot of alcohol here unless the ancestors ask for it. But Thoth does enjoy some alcohol. So for that reason, I have created a place where he can go and get it in the astral altar. I can also occasionally put alcohol in the altar, but because it can't be a consistent thing, I want to make sure that I'm at least trying for the offering, if that makes sense. Okay, so then Three, sorry. <laughs> Three, we're going to do, so first, all right, guys, so number... Three, number three is going to be image of your deity, okay? Make sure that you know exactly what your deity looks like. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? You need to have an idea of what this deity looks like. If you already have seen them, maybe in the astral or through visions or experiences, then you don't have to worry about this. Use the images that you have already in your mind. If you have a visual that that you have to look at physically, like I have a statue of Thoth, so I know what Thoth looks like, but Thoth can also show up as this, and he can also show up as an, a baboon. So you have to just know how your deity can show up. Now, this is important because personally for me, I like to create a certain type of spigot on the door, which allows me to see and know that this door is for this deity. And also throughout the entire altar, I wish to use whatever symbology they have, whatever sigil, signs, whatever art, whatever that conveys them to put in. For example, I'll put an image here of the six-pointed star with the man. That is an image that is commonly shown to people who practice alchemy, which Thoth is the front runner of B-O-B-O-B-O, Tehuti. So you may also know him as Hermes Trismegistus. So I also put those around the altar. I put a lot of alchemical and Egyptian symbology throughout the altar. So you can do that as well, just to be super tedious, because that's what I do. I do tedious, <laughs> just for fun though, like not anally, you know? Okay, so then the set, okay, so then this is where the actual practice starts, okay? Now that you have all of your information, you have all of your pictures, because the reason why I asked you to have a picture of your deity it's super, super important that should you ever lose the visual of your deity or you lose the presence of your deity in the process, maybe you get distracted, you can look at the picture and then you can bring yourself back into the energy. Or if you're trying to do something, you can open your eyes, look at it, fall back into the meditation and create that image. So I hope that makes sense. In my altar, I made a huge statue of Thoth in the middle of the entire thing, in the middle of the entire altar. So it is known that is Thoth's altar, if that makes sense. Or that is his space. That is where he reigned. That is the same type of thing. But it's just to honor them. So if you, if there's anything that you want to create in that way, or you end up trying to create in the moment that you have something to look at to help you along. Also, if there are any angels, archangels, or any other kind of helpful spirits that work with this energy, it's great to invite them into this space. Now, I would like to be careful in saying, do not invite other deities into this space, only helpful spirits. So for example, Thoth is also associated, it is also associated with Lord Sananda, which is the Jesus Christ kind of idea. Then we have the then we have Archangel Metatron, who is also associated with those. And there's one other one, but I cannot remember right now at this time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I invited these spirits into this space to help me curate it and to help me bring in the avenues in which it can be experienced. So I hope that makes sense. Okay. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to visualize a door. Get an idea of what you want the door to look like. Will it be red symbolizing your deity? For mine, my door for Thoth is blue. It's a, Thoth is the color blue, period. If you can see back here, the book that I use for Thoth is a dark navy royal blue, right? So that blue is on the door. But then Thoth is very big on embellishments. So lots of gold, lots of intricacies, lots of detail and artisan detail. Thoth is very big on music. So music is something I put upon entering. There is a sound for everything. And there is like a sway of music that is in the ambience of the entire place. And that is just to honor him. Okay. So when you're doing yours, Think about those things. And for me in ancient Egypt or basically in ancient times, music, art, philosophy, all of those things were as an offering to the gods. They were not for celebration like we use them now or just to have fun. They were offering to the gods. So we want to resemble whatever time period they were from with some of those things and whatever nuanced things make sure to collaborate with the deity on what they would like to add to what you have envisioned for them, okay? So now that we visualize the door in our sacred space, now we med we got into meditation, and now we are in our sacred space. You want to find a specific place for the door. And once you've found your specific place, create the door. Now, at this time that you've now created this door, you're going to call upon the deity that you're working with. Now, this deity will come into your sacred space, not into behind this door, okay? You're going to walk through the door together together, depending on how big your deity is, because different deities have different sizes. So your door will expand or shrink according to the deity size, and then you will walk through the door. Your door will stay the size of the deity. Please remember this, okay? You will walk through this door and then it will be just like your altar space, how we created it at first, just like your sacred space, how we created it first where it was all white. You will then start to imagine, say, for example, you have Aphrodite. Aphrodite is known to be the foam of the beach. So you may create a castle on a beach with luscious green and beautiful long vines hanging from the trees. There's shrubs of her specific flowers and she shells all over the place and translucidness throughout the palace instead of it being so hard and structured. It may be translucent, it may be iridescent, it may be indoor outdoor feel where there is no real doors. Everything is just walking through a temple and it is open and airy for the energy to flow through. People or people who may service her may be around in her specific timely garb. She might have people with the white robe like they did back in Rome and Greece in their traditional wear. So whatever works for you okay whatever works for that deity and whatever makes them feel comfortable because what you're doing is you're calling them from where they normally are into this space so that when you come visit them they can be comfortable not only that but they will be there when you say that you're coming or just they're there and they call you in okay so now that we have started to create this space i want you to start talking to your deity ask them what would you like to see? These are my ideas. And they already know because they can hear and see inside your mind what the ideas are. But you just have to offer them your ideas. These are the ideas I have. And either they will make suggestions or they will add things upon your idea. They may delete certain things that they don't necessarily like. And this is why I say converse with your deity to make sure you create a, a place for them. And the way that I think about this is think about if your Think about if your best friend or your child was to build you a house, right? They wouldn't just go off and build a house they want to live in. They're going to build a house by asking you, hey, what are the type of things that you would like in a house? 
what are the type of embellishments would you like? What are the finishings look like? Do you like farmhouse modern? Do you like, do you like mid-century modern? Do you like traditional? Do you like gaudy? Do you like country? What is your style of home? And by that, you, and then create that within your space. Take everything that is re-given to you where you have the okay and create the space as such. The way that you do this is you're going to visualize and specifically like to do the landscape first. So if you're going to be on a beach, for example, if we're still we're continuing with our main example, you're going to be on a beach. You want to create the beachfront first, create the wildlife first. Then you will create a clear area that has nothing on it except this bottom layer then you're going to start to build on top of it the shrine for the altar now for me personally i've seen where people create an actual altar where it's just like a table with blah 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 but for me this is so much more intricate and so much more personal and it's so much more of an experience when you go to visit your deity and spend time with them because now you're in their energy in their space in a place that makes them feel warm and welcoming. So you've created this space. Now, what I want you to do is zoom out from the space and create the boundaries of this space and set four pillars on each corner of the space. If your deity is very big into sacred geometry, you can do it in any other sacred shape as you wish. Put three huge pillars that has, they'll look like a large candle, but it'll be a pillar with a ever burning fire on top. And this is the altar space. Now in every altar, no matter what deity you have, you need to have some water. So if you are, if Aphrodite is your person, you're already gonna have water there because she is symbolized through water. But say for example, you're using someone like Ra. You might not put Ra, Ra's, complete everything on the ocean that may not be anything that he wants but you could put like a fountain of water or a fountain of lava or a you know what i'm saying create something but be in ingenuous be genuine and and be creative think of different ways that you can do this okay all right so now that we have meditated we have made the door. Now we have invited the deity. Now we walked into the sacred space. And now we have created the sacred space with our deity's help and their input. Okay. Now, now that you've created the space, right? What the next part that you're going to do is very, very, very simple. You're going to walk through this space and introduce like you're touring the property for your deity if anything does not seem up to par if anything needs to be grander greater if embellish embellishments in certain areas need to be expanded upon or if if any intricacies need to be made for example i know that those is very big on detail so as we walk through his he wanted, for example, on the columns, he didn't want just regular old columns. He wanted all the columns to be embroidered with hieroglyphics. And so he basically downloaded the, under, the words into my mind of what he wanted on the pillars in certain areas and what knowledge they conveyed and what doors they should unlock upon gazing. And even some I didn't quite understand fully yet, and he told me to put these in these areas, so then I did that. And sometimes you don't have to come into full understanding. That understanding may come later. But doing as the deity wishes to make them as comfortable as possible, okay? Anything can be added to this space at any time. So if you, for example, have an astral altar for Thoth, right? So then you also have an astral altar for Isis. There, you can create a meeting place in which you can access both altars from the same space, which is going to be our next point. So take your time. This may take a day or two, okay, creating this altar. And the reason why I say this is because through creating the altar, you may get tired. It takes a lot of energy. And sometimes if you're not used to holding that much energy, you may not be able to finish it in one day. 
that is okay. You can come back the next day or you can take a break and come back into the meditation. Now that you have established it though, fully in its entirety, you have been giving the clear from your deity to that it's finished and it's done. You can now create another altar. And what I do is, for example, I have a door. I have one door that I created in my sacred space that's for the deity if I want to directly go to them. But I also have another door that says altar space. What that means is I can go into this space and I can access all of my altar realms at once. What that means is I will place the altar realms that I have created in a kind of clockwise motion around a specific thing with one walkway to the door. So there'll be a door, there'll be a walkway, there'll be a circle of basically giant gates instead of doors. And I can see into each realm from this place. And I can also do my working, my personal altar workings in this space where all of the altars are current and here in my presence, but I am not doing the work in a specific altar, if that makes sense. So say, for example, I'm doing a working on my clairs, on my abilities, on my psychic abilities and my mediumistic abilities. And so I have an altar for Thoth, an altar for Isis, an altar for Nymphis, an altar for Anubis, and an altar for Ra right? And if I have those five altars and then I come into this space in the middle, then I can call all five energies into this space in the middle to do the working with me, pulling on the energy from each altar, but not being in one specific altar, invading that deity space. I hope that really makes sense. So in doing this middle part, I feel like it requires you to have at least two altars set up in the astral. Otherwise, you can pretty much work in your deity's altar. I only do this because I don't like to mix match unless the deities specifically say, let's do this working over here or let's do this working over there. So I hope that makes sense, okay? What else should you know? Okay, this middle space can look however you wish. For me, it looks like a garden kind of, but I have it in a way that it looks very Egyptian. So it has like the hieroglyphics on the floor around the grass. And then I have some railing and I have a lot of things and a lot of fire and a lot of embellishment that I specifically like, but I'm very like into kind of like the modern and the old clashing with the new type of ideas. So I usually incorporate that into my astral altars as well. So use your own aesthetic, invite whatever energies you like. If you like fairies, if you like gnomes, if you work with the fae, if you work with Jen, if you work with whomever, invite them into this space. This is your personal space where you would like to work with these energies often, okay? So that is how you create an astral altar. Now, I want to allude to something that I'm super excited about. Now, in the next video, I'm going to teach you guys how to create an oracle book for each altar. And what's going to be so awesome about this is in your personal altar, you're going to create a master book. Okay. And I call this, I have one of my Akashic records and I call it the, what do I call it? I don't, I can't tell y'all the name apparently. I'm being told to shut up, but you can name your book something specific. This book will have all the knowledge. This is going to be your working grimoire for each deity. And then you will have one for your main altar in the middle that all of the information from each deity, all of your experiences, all of your spells, all of your rituals, all of your initiations will be downloaded into the all book in which you then can flip through. What's really awesome about this book is it also contains knowledge from your Akashic records. So should you want to access certain things from your Akashic records, you can access it from this book. This book is like a portal jumper. It will jump from place to place. Should you call on it, you can raise your hand like this and call for the book, it will come to you. And then you can open it and ask it a question. It will reveal the page and you will have the information. 
instantaneously. I hope that this helped. I also use the book as a directory. So if this is like super awesome and you want to know how to create your altar book, please come back, okay, for my next video where I will teach you guys how to create this book Okay, and then how to tap into the next part of this journey. I hope that you have enjoyed this video, honey, because it was long as hell, but I needed you to get it with all the deets. I just feel like this is going to change your life, okay? This is going to change your practice, especially for my people who are closet witches. And this is the reason why I made this series was because for a long time, I was a closet witch. I didn't tell anybody that I was practicing magic. I didn't tell anybody that I was a witch or a pagan or a sorceress or whatever I wanted to call myself at that time. And I didn't tell anybody. I was just doing it when nobody was looking. <laughs> and so if this is you, this is a great way to set up to convene with your spirits, to convene and talk to them and do your magical workings in the astral. What's also really good about this is say, for example, you wanted to do a spell. You can physically in the physical do the spell as you can in whatever space you're in and light a candle, but you can take the energy of that candle and create the actual working in your astral altar as big or as grand as you want. For example, if you are someone who practiced ceremonial magic, but you can't practice that in your current situation, you can create a small version of that spell, burn all the papers that go with that spell. So if you draw a sigil, you can burn it. If you draw like a spell sigil and Put the intention that it show up in the altar for the creating of the spell and you burn it on the candle in which is supposed to push the spell out. Then when you come back into your altar, you'll be able to work with that energy and send it out with the energy of your spell. I hope that made sense. I tried. <laughs> okay, so. This is the end of the video, guys. I hope that you received a lot of information. I hope you took notes. And if you didn't, you better scroll that motherfucker back. You heard me. So that you can get every single thing that you need to go forward and just fucking mess that game. You heard me. So a quick update. I am now starting to promote the Grove. Okay, so... You guys are going to start hearing about this a lot and a lot, a lot more. And basically, this is going to be a place where you can receive all of the knowledge that I'm giving away here on YouTube for free and some of the things that are just too personal or too for YouTube, okay? And we can do them together in this community. I want it to be like a coven which is basically just a group of witches or a group of pagans or a group of spiritualists who work together in certain works or learn together and share experiences. And I think that this would be amazing. So if you would like to join this, if you think this would be an awesome, cool idea, and I eventually want to have a physical location where we can all link up, have like an amazing time and y'all can come and take classes, do meditations and super cool stuff. So in the near future, I will be starting a campaign so that we can create this together and we can all join this community and do some really cool fucking shit. You heard me. So until then, I want to leave you in the love and the light of the greater I am. Whether you are on the left or the right-hand path or somewhere sneakily in the middle, honey, may the light guide you and take you to your greatest origin. Meet the things that you need to meet. Accomplish the things that you need to accomplish and stop fucking past everything that you've ever been through because you deserve it. You deserve everything that's coming for you, everything that you wish to happen, all of your goals being fully manifested in the physical because you are truly amazing. And I see you thriving, honey, with all of that damn flavor. And you better go goddamn get it. I love you so much. May the greater divine be with you, over you, and through you, honey. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.